Hello and welcome to Matt's Corner of Gem Cutting. Uh, I'm gonna be going through cutting some pieces of gem silica. So a lot of people probably don't even know what gem silica is. It is a very rare gemstone. Gem silica is a blue-greenish variety of chalcedony. It actually gets its coloring from the presence of copper. It's often found near copper deposits. The material is typically cabbed. The nicer specimens are clean without inclusions. The pieces I'm working on do have inclusions throughout the pieces. The nicer pieces come from Arizona. I'll be cutting them for Paul Hanks, who owns a rare rock shop down in southern Utah. They got some really pretty color, but there's a bit of rock, another matrix still on these trim pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my heavy grit go in and I'm going to grind off a lot of this excess material that we don't want in the finished stone to preform it down and see what the stone looks like so I can figure out how I want to cut it as far as shape and to keep the shape and size as big as possible. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to grind those now. <laughs> Getting there, got a lot of this uh, matrix ingrained into the piece. So we're trying to get it to where it's mostly clean so we could get it adopt and start the actual faceting. Got a lot of nasties right down in this area. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get them all out, but we'll see what we can do with the piece. There we have the first piece preformed. I got it preformed into a what will become a large marquee cut. Looked like it would be the best for it. So let me go on the second piece now. You know, they look <laughs> it's quite a bit different looking now that it's been preformed down from something that looked like this. Anyway, let's get going on this one. Okay, here's the pieces now that I am done preforming them. I got most of the major part chunks of the rock and other uh, flaws, inclusions, major things that needed to go are all out. And I've preformed them into some general shapes. Here, this one, I'll be cutting into a cushion. I believe a cushion will look good in it. Still has a little bit of the rock on the back bubbly inclusion there but that shouldn't be too bad from the front and the larger one here got a really pretty blue color i'll be cutting it into a large marquee shape so so i'll go get these pieces dopped up now and get them ready for faceting so here i have the stone dopped ready to go uh, on this piece I'm going to be doing just a free form cut to save its size as much as possible. And so I'm actually going to be starting by cutting in a girdle outline. Uh, you won't be getting much brilliance coming back through the stone where it's more of a like a, I don't know milky, cloudy type of stone. It's not fully crisp clear. Uh, it's where we would get a lot of light returns. So I'm not going to be doing any fancy cutting on the back just to a step cut is all I'm going to do after I get my girdle outline. And we'll see how big we can keep it. And I'm starting here with a 360 grit just to get the rough outline cut in. Okay, 
Here I have the girdle now roughed in with the heavy grit. Got it about where I want it. Now I'll go put on my 600 grit and I'll finish cutting in the girdle just how I want it. Then I'll move into cutting the steps of the step cuts as I cut in the rest of the back. I now have the girdle facets cut in with the 600 grit. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna find the angles for the step cuts facets I want to do and just figure out the angles and cut them as I go to fit the stone and see how that goes. Start with 45 degree angle, see about where that's at and adjust as needed. 50. And for starting this I'm actually going to switch back to a heavier grid just to get it cut in a little bit. This is going to take too long on my worn 600 for a stone this big water going, keep any dust out of the air, don't want to be breathing in any dust from the material. Alright, I have some facets roughed in with the heavy grits, now I'll go back and switch to the 600 and get them cut back in and looking good. Alright, i am finally got all the facets cut in now. we got four steps in the step cut. Anyway, so now I'm going to try seeing if it'll go straight to a polish with the uh, cerium oxide without having to hit it with the pre-polish with the stone's hardness of around seven. I can't remember exactly what it is in that range, but where my 600 is really worn, it cuts more like a 1200. I might be able to skip hitting it with the 3000 if the uh, if it'll polish quick with just the cerium oxide. So we'll try that, see if we could save a little bit of time. We're already in the stone about two hours, so see if we can get it done. Looks like I already have this charged actually with some chrome oxide, so we'll see how that does. See if we can get it just to start polishing the way it is. I just got to go through now and get them all polished. It looks like I can go straight to the oxide polish from that uh, fine 600 and it'll look good. So I'll take a little while. I'll get through them all, do all these tiers. Here's the stone with two of the tiers polished. I am going to switch and try the pre-polish polish on these last two tiers to see if I could get them, to, if that'll polish any faster over just uh, grinding it in with the oxide. So I've hit these last two tiers with the 3000 grit. Now I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to hit it with the 50k and compare it to the oxide and see which I actually like better for polishing this material. And then I'll finish polishing it and be done with this side. That's going to be the oxide polish. It's immediately putting in some scratching that I'm not going to like. So we'll go back and we'll, now that we got it pre-polished, I'll finish hitting it with the oxide and be done with the first half of the first hour. And of course it is a little quicker to hit it with the final polish now after the pre-polish whether it's actually saving me time. I really don't know. It might have been about the same time. Just less grinding per facet all on that at once. I have the pavilion side of this stone now completely finished, cut and polished, ready to go into the transfer block. Boy, this took forever. Uh, the size on this is 28 millimeters, 28 and a half millimeters long. I think it was about 12 and a half ish wide. So it's pretty, pretty big stone. It's taken me a little while to get it cut, but I, it'll be really nice once finished. I mean, with the color, I love the color of, of the gem silica. I think it'll be pretty. So. We'll keep going, we'll get it transferred, and I'll get started on the other piece. It's now I'm ready to get going on this second piece here. 
So I'll be doing a similar cutting method as the first stone. I'll be just free-forming a girdle outline and then free-forming in the pavilion side with a step cut just going off the girdle outline that we have. So I'll get going on that. Let's see how this one goes. All right, I have the stone all roughed in now and I'm switched back to my 600 grit to do all the main cutting. I'll start with the girdle and then go back and cut in all the steps that I want. Uh, this piece has quite a few bubbly inclusions, some other flaws which I've positioned in the pavilion of the stone as to keep them low visibility from the front of the stone when it's all finished. When viewing from the crown side so you can see there's still a bit in it. There's no way to cut them out and keep any size to the stone so it'll have flaws but I think it'll still be alright the way I have it positioned. So There we go about 76 facets later we got the pavilion now cut in. Now I have to go back and Hit each one about twice more except for the 16 girdle facets. I'll leave them just with the pre-polish at the 3000 grit, but all the rest I'll go hit now with the 3000 and then with the oxide polish and get this pavilion side finished up. I'm now finished with the pavilion side on this stone, so let's take it out and let's take a look at it. Here's the pavilion side, all faceted and polished. And you can see the flaws a little better now that it's been polished that are still going to be in the stone. But I think it'll look fine when viewed from the crown side of when it's finished. So we'll get that in the transfer block and get going on the crown sides. Alright, I have the marquees here transferred and I'm ready to get going on the crown side. Now I wanted to do a, a brilliant style uh, cut on the crown. So what I actually did, I went into a gem CAD on the computer real quick and I copied the outline the best I could for the stone and came up with a diagram for the crown to make it easier on me so I don't have to be uh, guessing the angles as much while I'm trying to cut this. And I'll probably still have to adjust the angles a little bit because my girdle outline is probably not quite perfect true to the stone to get the meat points, but it'll be a lot closer than if I was just uh, throwing in angles and trying to make it work without first kind of pre-designing what I wanted to do for the crown. And what I think I'm going to do, just like with the last segment of that other stone, I'll probably just throw the whole cutting process of this of the crown side of this stone in a time lapse and we'll see it when it's done. is finished. It took a little while but got it done. Um, I did have to do some little adjustments. Um, shallowed it a tiny bit and I had to cut in a little deeper to get rid of a bubble that was over on this side of the stone. I didn't want to keep in it. I was a little disappointed I had this little bit of just that solid blue protruded in deeper into the stone than I had anticipated and it didn't quite cut out. It still goes in a little bit so I decided just to leave it so it'll give the stone a little character but it's still a really pretty piece despite all the flaws in it so now I'll get it thrown in the acetone and we'll see that one when it's done and I'll get uh, the crown side cut on my other piece. Alright here is the second piece transferred ready for the crown to be cut and just like the last one I went in and I designed my own a uh, crown for the stone that I'll have to go and adjust the angles as I'm actually cutting in to get them close to perfect but it's so all just like the last one I'll do a time lapse and see how it goes. There's the crown I designed 
So we'll see how close we can keep it and get this one finished. the facets cut in on the crown side so far and for the most part they lined up pretty well with the design that I made and there's not much uh, wasted depth on the crown which I really like. I just need to come in on these side facets lower the angle a little bit to get them to meet up at the meet point I created. So if I just change the angle down a little bit, little bit I'll do that with a 3000 as I'm going in and pre-polishing it to get all the meets to line up where I want them. Um, other than that, uh, the inclusions on the crown side of the stone aren't having too much of an effect at the surface level, which I'm really liking in this piece. So I'll go on to the 3000 pre-polish now and continue with it. So this piece is now finished. I actually really like the way the crown turned out on this side. It cut a lot smoother than the first stone. I mean, you can see uh, some of the flaws through it. These stones actually have a little more transparency to them than I originally thought uh, before cutting them. This is my first time cutting the uh, gem silica material and it's got some pretty color. It is quite milky, but it does have a little more transparency than I originally was thinking. So let me throw this now in the acetone and we'll go to uh, seeing them when they're off and finished. Okay, so here are the pieces all finished up. They still look pretty good despite the amount of flaws and inclusions that are still in these pieces. I'm really liking their color, the way that they look, the way they turned out. So the marquees finished up at 28.5 by 12.4 millimeters and is 15.42 carats. The cushion cut is 15.06 by 10.67 millimeters and it finished at 7.6 carats. I mean with these pieces they were cut to save as much size as possible. That's why I did the free form cutting to begin with and then created my own crowns because the guy I'm cutting for really just wanted them to stay as big as possible. I mean, they turned out fairly big. I mean, I think he'll like them, so. Overall, they're pretty neat stones, very unusual material. Did have a little bit more clarity than I was originally thinking, so I could actually see a little bit more of the flaws and stuff in the stone from the front than I thought I might, but given the pieces, they turned out fairly decent. So. Thanks for watching.